so let me just say I'm very thankful for my wife. She sent me a message as I'm standing. She said, smile. So, I'm so glad I'm in covenant. And she's got my front, not just my back. So I'm smiling. I'm smiling in English and in Afrikaans. I mean, whichever one. I just want to latch on to the social responsibility thing very quickly before I have the privilege of welcoming up this beautiful couple over here. Um, social responsibility, you know, it is such an important thing for us to remember that everything that we've been given, like I said, has been given to us by God. And what a blessing it is for us to be able to give, to be able to come alongside and give those who are in need. And there are three ways in which we can give for this particular Christmas drive. The first way is obviously if you are able to financially give something, that will be very, very welcome. The second thing is to take a box, like Tracy mentioned in the video, take a box and in faith, if you believe that you've got people that could help, fill up that box. There's a list of needs for the box. You can do that. And the third thing is to give up your time, to come and actually be part of the handing out of those, um, those boxes and just seeing what God is doing through us as a church for the community, for the people within our church and the community at large. And so please remember that the, the table is in the foyer. So as you feel led, please go and sign up. It is now my privilege to welcome up an amazing couple, Bongani and Lulama. I should say Lulama and Bongani. Okay. So, so I, teased, I teased this morning. I teased this morning. I teased this morning because I said that um, this morning Pastor Mary also started and then Pastor Marlon was after. So I said it's almost like that movie, Beauty and the Beast. Because every time it's the beauty that comes up. And then it's the one that was redeemed that comes up after. And so, family, will you put your hands together for this amazing couple as they lead us in the world this morning? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. Oh, good morning, family. Uh, let me just put on my four eyes. Um, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Lulama. As Nathan mentioned, good morning. Uh, Lula Mamnisi, I am a wife. I am a parent. Um, I'm married to uh, my James Bond over there. <laughs> Bongani. I'm a proud parent to two beautiful angels. I don't seem to see them at the moment. There they are. Um, my eldest is Disani, my youngest is Tafika. They have a tendency to drive me up the wall, but hey, that's part of family. Family, I am also a child of this church. I am together with my husband. We are marriage ministry servants. I live and I breathe to serve my heavenly father. Amen. So, my husband is going to come up a little later, but I'm going to be sharing a couple of things this morning. So, last week, you may or you may not have had the opportunity to hear Pastor Stephen, uh, as well as Vaughan and Janine, where they ushered and opened this um, family series. And they had the opportunity to speak to us about the beauty of covenant. Today, my husband and I have the divine opportunity to share in God's word. As we are going to be uncovering the purpose and the blessing of family. Amen. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, as I come before you this morning, dear Lord, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. Lord, we do not take it for granted. Lord, I thank you for these men and women, these children who are here with us today. Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless and anoint each and every one of us. Almighty, I ask that you will make our, so our hearts soft and pliable to receive your word. Lord, we pray for miracles today. We pray that you will break all these chains, Lord, that have been holding us back. Lord God, I ask with my husband that you will increase as we decrease today, Lord. 
We thank you, Father God, for this we say in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, yes, officially welcome to everybody here. Welcome to our online family, as my youngest daughter would normally say, I see you, we see you. We indeed can see you and we welcome you into this place. So, why do we call you family? Because you are part of a spiritual family. Because you have your own family. Whether your family is with you today or not, you are still part of a family. And let me remind you, if you didn't know, that God has destined us, all of us, together to establish his purposes. And that is why we are here. Amen? You know, uh, probably I'm going to say 18 months ago, all of us would stand, well, you'd either sit or you'd stand in your, um, in, your, in your dining room or sitting room, and we would wait for our political father to come through and talk to us at 8 o'clock. Would, we would all be ready for him. And sometimes he would kind of rock up at quarter to nine, uh, but we'd still wait for him. But that was the beauty of family, because he would call us. And just like it is, today we do have a family meeting, but it's of a different kind this time, because we have been called to God, by God. If we believe that the purpose of God in our lives can be fulfilled in one generation, then please note that our vision and our understanding of God's purpose, it's actually quite limited. And I've also come to believe that we're actually insulting God. I don't know about you, but I have no desire to insult God. And I doubt that neither of you do. So those clever people um, there in England, you know, the ones who came up with the Oxford and the Cambridge Dictionary, they, they have a definition for what purpose is, right? And they define it as, as followers the reason for which something is done or created or which something exists. Remember that. Now imagine if you were given the opportunity to create yourself. Imagine what that would look like. You would create yourself, I would imagine, for yourself, for your own selfish purposes. Vanessa would create herself for herself. Curl would create herself for herself. Vaughn would create himself for himself. And if you just have a quick picture of what that would look like, there would be absolute catastrophe. because we would all be serving our own purposes. The reason why you are part of a family is, beca is because God has created a purpose for you. You don't know what you're gonna do tomorrow, but he does. Media team, if I can please ask if you can proceed to the next slide. So we'll be looking at two portions from God's word this morning. The first, looking at God's intention, and the second will focus on a biblical narrative account. So we, we, we're going to touch on this, uh, this portion of scripture just, just a little bit, so just bear with me. So if you open your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis, or you can follow behind, 
Genesis 1, verses 26 to 28. And I'm particularly reading from the ESV version. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heaven, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on earth. There's three things I wanna call out from this portion of scripture. God's purpose, God's action, God's blessing. God's purpose, one, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Two, action. So God was busy. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Three, blessing. And God blessed them. Have you noticed how many times the word them has been used in this portion of scripture? I'll allow you guys to have a look. Why am I focusing on that word specifically? Because God's purpose was never for man to actually operate in a silo. It was never intended for man to operate or function by themselves. I came through from a family. You came through from a family. We all did. None of us is exempt or special from that fact. And because man came through family and functions in a family, that is still not changed. It's not going to change today. And let me remind you, it is never going to change. Amen? Hmm. Now, you may say to me, Lulama, God has wonderful purposes for family. But, you know, not, not my family. That, what you've just told me now, that, that, that's not my reality. That's not where I am. My family and I are not together. We fight, we bicker, we don't see eye to eye. There's World War VIII, calamities all over the place. Instead of this generational blessing God speaks about, my family, as a matter of fact, Lulama, is actually prone to attack and probably generational cursing. I'd respond to you and I'd say to you, you know what, you're right. You are absolutely right. That is your reality. But then I'd tell you there's God's reality. So, you know, some family conflicts are inevitable. So in our world of sin today, some people will reject Christ and others will accept him. So that others reject and others accept is what creates this calamity because there's something in you who's accepted Christ that those who haven't accepted him, it jars, it fights, and they don't understand 
but it is your responsibility in the midst of the pain you are in where God is going to start working. As a matter of fact, he started working before the calamity. So, a quick story. My mother, right, um, she was diagnosed some years ago, I don't know when, with an autoimmune disease called thyroidism. And um, I have a very vivid memory. And as I was preparing for this, I was asking God, or I was actually saying to him, God, you know, it's so amazing how there's certain things that we go through in our lives. You actually make us remember them. And like, I don't know why. But I believe I remember this so that I could share it with you today. She said something in particular that uh, it threw me out a bit and I didn't understand. Um, but as a result of it, 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 it changed the course of my life as I know it. So with her autoimmune uh, disease, thyroidism, she was subject to having to take quite a few pills. And on this particular day, she and I were at home, and uh, we were in the kitchen, and I remember looking at her because she was popping pills, eh? She was popping pills left, right, and center, and she was drinking her water, and I was staring at her. I was looking up at her. I probably was a few years older than my eldest, uh, a young adult. I looked at her out of curiosity more than anything else, but it was her words that now I understand. Hmm. She said to me, and uh, she spoke in Kosa, and I'll translate. I see you looking at me. You're looking at it as I'm taking these pills. Listen, my girl. You are going to be just like me. Do you hear me? You're going to have the same thing I have. I love my mother. I love her with all my heart. And I believe that she didn't know what she was saying. But I do believe that she had cast a curse on me. Long story short, I got the same autoimmune disease, thyroidism, whatever. However, here's the, here's the kicker. Like I mentioned to you, the trajectory of my life would change from that point. So I would assume there are some uh, medical practitioners in the house. So what I'm about to say, you can choose to confirm or deny it. So the thing with autoimmune diseases, such as thyroidism, just a quick medical tutor of sorts, tutoring, is that it comes with a, a few nasty, ugly things. One of those things is called depression. The other of those things is anxiety. The other of those things could be bipolar. And there's, there's a series of them. I happen to get one. And that was depression. My depression was 
It felt like tornadoes. It felt like a, an earthquake. It felt, it felt like a real natural disaster. And I do believe that had I not made one decision, I would not be standing here today. So it came to a point, you know, over the years, there would be calamities and fights, and I would fight and bicker with her, and I would tell her things that are not right, and that this is the way you should go, this is what the word of God says, mama, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this kind of escalated to the rest of my family, and we were broken, and, 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 and. And it affected even my, my close family you know, my, my depression. And it took a while because now I was starting to blame myself for what I didn't ask for. But everything in my life that was happening, it, I saw it as my fault. And it would get to stages where I would pray and I'd cry, I'd see doctors and pray and pray and cry and cry. And one particular day, I cried, I had a knife in my bag. I actually came to, to church back then. And I was, Lord, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot do this. My marriage is being affected so badly. I don't know what type of mother I actually am. And I cried to him. And I remember the words where God said to me, it is enough. The buck stops here. And I said to God, I don't want this. I don't want this illness. I never even asked for it. I don't want it on an enemy. I don't want it on my children. I don't want it on my children's children. I don't want it. So take it away, take it away, because it doesn't belong to me. It's stifling my life. It's stifling me hearing you. It's stifling me doing the things that I know deep in my heart I need to be doing for you, for my children, for my husband. Take it away. And he did. So, whether you are a single mother who's here today or you are online and you have been praying for your son or your daughter who is in rehab because of drug abuse, whether you are a husband who is praying for his wife and your marriage because it is, looks like there's irreconcilable difference, whether you've got a brother or a cousin or somebody in your family who's sitting in prison today, I'm telling you today that God can turn you around because that is his purpose for you. That in the midst of your pain, if there's one thing that you have been called to do on this earth, and that is just to pray for your family, then you own it. Turn with me to the book of Micah. Seven verses six to seven. And it says, for a son dishonors his father, a daughter rises up against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the members of his own household. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for my Savior. My God will hear me. Don't you even doubt for a second that he doesn't hear you. Don't you even doubt for a second that he doesn't see your pain. Don't you even doubt for a second that he is not going to break those chains. 
Don't you even doubt for a second that you were not born to do his will, that you don't have a purpose, because I can tell you, you do. Don't even doubt that. As my James Bond comes up, Family, I want, to, <clears throat> I want to leave you with this scripture. In Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, it says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? says the Lord. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Whatever wasteland you're in, our heavenly father is telling you. He's telling you to perceive it. He's telling you that it is coming. That streams of life will flow in your family. It will flow in your children. It will flow in your husband. It will flow in your marriage. Because he has promised you that it is so. Amen. So Janine and I have, uh, we've got an inside joke, guess it's not inside anymore, where, you know, in a family you would generally say, tag, you're it. Uh. It is clear I'm not part of that tag team, um, because it's the first time I hear of this tag. But thank God that I am included here this morning. Good morning, family. This platform is God's platform. I stand here this morning because of God's grace. I think my wife touched on, you know, her story. And I think part of that story that I want to just maybe extend is that when I got into her life as a broken man, so as I stand here, she calls me James Bond. James Bond, it's, it's something else. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm, I'm a broken man. Um, and I, I really want you to listen to what I'm going to share very quickly here this morning, is that sometimes we may look beautiful, we may look like we are a strong couple, but we go through stuff because the enemy wants to wipe the floor with us because the enemy doesn't want us to fulfill God's purposes that God has for us. Now, you've got to understand that when we go back to Genesis 1, 26 to 28, what my wife read is that God made man and in the end he blessed them it is God who blesses us in order for us to fulfill God's purposes. My wife said that we did not create ourselves. Therefore, we cannot know what our purposes are unless we are in Christ. Now, what I'm trying to say here this morning is that if you don't know Christ, it's not enough to sit where you're sitting here this morning. And I know that it may sound a bit sharp that I'm saying this is because I sat where you sitting this morning and I was still doing many things. I heard my wife, you know, still coming to church. I did many things and I wanted to look good, very arrogant. And God said to me, son, if you are going to have a family that is going to do things that I want you to do, you have got to come clean. I did things that my wife didn't know about. But God said to me, I need to tell her. And I said, God, how, how do I speak to my wife? You know, my wife gets very angry. <laughs> so, yeah. So she, 
She does. <laughs> and I love her. So I, I said, God, you know, if you, if, you, if you say I must do this, then you have to walk with me. And, 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 and many times, you know, he did. I didn't trust him. I, I didn't. And, and, and there was this one time God said, you have got to do it because your wife is going through many things. You're going through many things. There are so many things that I have for you. But in order for you to achieve that, you've got to do what I'm asking you, son. And I did that. I suffered the consequences of my actions. I was out of the house. I thank God for his mercy and grace for I am standing here this morning. Because had it not been for God, my wife and I would not be serving in the marriage ministry. We would not be preaching the word here this morning. You know, I remember a friend of mine called me this one time. It was a few months ago. He said, bro, my family is about to be divorced. I don't know what to do. I've been talking to them. But because God appointed us in this role to serve people, we met with the couple. And after meeting with them and praying with them, now listen to this. It's not us. We prayed with them. In other words, we invited Holy Spirit to partner with us to shower the couple back into the covenant that God has created for them. Now, what is very powerful about that is that when we finished that meeting, they kissed. It was a Friday and the Saturday there was a rugby playing. I don't know what team that was. It was... Springbok and what was the other team? I forgot. Yeah, Wales. Yeah, Wales. We beat them that day. It was a good game. Later on, I saw a video that said, Bongani, look here. They were also at the game. They were holding hands. Now I'm saying glory to God. Because God, wherever you are today, God will restore your family. Even if you think you are broken, Beyond repair, we are trusting God to break generational curses this morning. We are trusting God to bestow generational blessings in each and every family represented here this morning and those who are watching online. Family, let me take you through a scripture so that I can still be within the time. I know Nathan might probably be looking at me and say, Bongani, get to the point. <laughs> so, Let's read together in the book of Joshua, right? Um, I'll be reading from Joshua 2, 12 to 21. It says, Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that as I have dealt kindly with you, you also will deal kindly with my father's house and give me a sure sign that you will save alive my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and deliver our lives from death, and the man said to her, our life for yours even to death. If you do not tell the business of ours, then when the Lord gives us the land, we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. 15 says, then she led them down by a rope through the window, for her house was built into the wall, into city wall, so that she lived in the wall. And she said to them, go into the hills or pursuers, will encounter you and hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Then after, you may go your way. The man said to her, we will be guiltless with respect to this oath of yours that you have made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall tie this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And you shall gather into your house, your father and mother, your brothers and all your, fa your father's household, then if anyone goes out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his head. And we shall be guiltless. But if a hand is laid on anyone who is with you in the house, his blood will be on our head. But if you tell of this business of ours, then we shall be guiltless with respect to your oath that you have made us swear. And she said, according to your words, so be it. And then she sent them away. They departed and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. Now, 
she told them, instructed them to go to the wilderness for three days and hide there. That was the instruction. But when they left, what does the scripture say? What does the scripture say? It says, she tied the scarlet cord immediately. So she did not wait. I mean, three days. She gave them three days. But she did not wait to think, okay, fine. They must wait three days. Maybe only then I can tie it. She tied it immediately. So where you are sitting this morning, what are you feeling? Are you feeling butterflies? Because you know you're not saved. And yet there are things that you want, that you want God to begin to open up in your family. Are you going to tie the cord this morning? This is a very, very important message because the same cord that Rahab tied is the one that saved them. Now, what is very, very important in the understanding of the scripture is that we do understand that Joshua sent the spies, Rahab hides them, and while they are there, you know, the officials come, she protects them, but at the same time, she asks for a favor. And in that favor, she says, nothing else, please save my family when the men of God come here to destroy Jericho. That's all she's asking for. What are you asking for for your family this morning? What are you asking for for your family? I've asked God. God has given me many things because I have tied the cord. I still, amen, I still do many things. And thank God for my wife who prays, the one who always prays, the one God said I must go fetch her from Engobo in the Eastern Cape. You know, when I was growing up uh, in high school, my principal used to say in Shangan, he said, Loko unga fambi utateka makwenu. In other words, if you do not travel, you are going to marry the sister next door. Now, <laughs> now, 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 this is my story because I, I, I do believe, you know, there are those who married, you know, which is next door, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> that is your story. But my story, God knows how broken I was. He wanted me to have a praying woman. He wanted me to travel, to go to the Eastern Cape, small town in Engobo, Emaseleni, to go and find my wife. Thank God she's not Isela, a thief. She's my wife and she prays. And because of her, I have managed to tie the cord and I'm standing here this morning. So thank you very much. And I encourage each and every one this morning to tie the cord. Will you tie the cord? There are three things that we're going to look um, at Rahab's um, you know, story here. And I'll touch on the background, the binding and the boundaries. And for the sake of time, there's many things that I might not cover, but listen to this. Regardless of what your family is going through, you can be saved. That's just a fact. It doesn't matter what you're going through. All right, Rahab had a terrible past, immoral and sexually, I mean, sorely, uh, so socially unacceptable prostitute. That was a job description. That's how she made a living. Now, many of us are making, you know, we're doing many things. My, 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 my encouragement here is that we listen to the story and understand where Rahab was, right? Rahab was a prostitute until that day. When the men of God arrived in her house, she saved them. Her purpose was fulfilled that day. Amen. So sometimes we ask God, I don't know what my purpose is. You, you know, when am I going to have time to fulfill mine? God knows the time because we need to fulfill his purpose. But you should not give up. Why I say this is that we shouldn't forget 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 that says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Now, it's very simple. Is that if you want to be and experience the blessing that God has for you, you have to accept Christ. You have to be in Christ. That's a very, very clear message. We also know that there is a mercy seat for each and every one of us. We read this in uh, Hebrews 9, um, verse 2 to 5. 
And um, what's very important about this scripture, without going so much into it, is that there are three things in that scripture. I think what's very important is that when I speak, you may want to take notes and you may want to go and read the scripture so you can confirm that what I'm saying is truth. I do not speak words of my own. I speak words of God. Now, please go and read the scriptures I'm reading here today so that you can get the anointing that God has for you. The scripture in Hebrews contains three things that are very, very important. Is the Ark of the Covenant was a small chest made of acacia wood overlaid with gold and open at the top. Now, the Ark of the Covenant had manna in it. Why? Because it had manna because the Israelites murmured. They complained about God's provision when they were in the desert. They also had Aaron's uh, uh, battered rod because they were rebelling against God's leadership that he had instituted. It's very important to also know that the third point contains the broken tablets, sign of rebellion against God. This is where the Ten Commandments were written because the Israelites began to serve the false gods, the golden calves. It's very important, family, that we know that our God, it's loving. Our God sent Jesus to die for us while we were sinners. We read this in Romans 5, verse 8. That's how God shows his love for us. Please know that you don't have to worry so much about how much and what you've done. God is waiting for you to make that call. We read also in 1 Samuel 6, verse 19, that says, and he struck some of the men of Beth Shemeth because they looked upon the ark of the Lord. He struck 70 men of them and the people moaned because the Lord has struck the people with a great blow. Now, what were the people doing? They were trying to look into the mercy seat. They were trying to look into the covenant that God has created. Now, it is very, very important that we understand that we should not let anyone not anyone come into the space where they try to open the mercy seat that God has for us. When God said it's done, it is done. All that we need to do is look at him and believe that it is done. Many families are going through financial challenges, broken marriages like mine was broken many years back. Thank God you restored it. Yesterday, a friend of mine, a colleague, in fact, he said he was at a car wash and he they shot at his car, 18 bullets was in his car, but he wasn't there. This is happening in the township somewhere. I don't want to mention it, but it happened yesterday. These are things that are happening. Relationships, families, children are rebelling against God, but we can pray to God. God is waiting for us to pray unto him. But one thing I would like you to confirm is that you need to proclaim this morning that you will not be next. You and your family will not be next. We will not live in fear in this country of ours. In Cape Town, our city, we pray a prayer of blessing. We pray that God may release his blessing so that everyone may not live in fear. We will serve and fulfill the purposes of God in our generation. We will rise above our current circumstances. We will see our nation be what God has intended for it to be. Amen. Now, it's very important I share with you that, you know, we shouldn't even feel about, you know, sometimes we feel sorry, you know, for our children. We don't want to spoil their fun. We, you know, we want them to enjoy their lives. Some parents even said, I want my children to go to a university far away so they can experience what university life is. If my mother knew what I did being in Cape Town, in other words, if my life in Cape Town was to be replayed, I don't know what it would look like. My mother would be so broken. Now, it's very important that we stop and protect our children from the heartbreaks that my wife even highlighted. We need to create the boundaries by tying the cord. We need to create the boundaries. That's what Rahab did. When she tied the cord, that cord created a boundary. Her family was saved. Amen. Now, it's very important once again to highlight Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8 that says, He who digs a pit will fall into it and a serpent will bite him 
who breaks through a wall. What's very clear here is that when I did what I did in darkness, what I thought is, because my wife doesn't see me, I could continue doing what I was doing, because it was in darkness. For those who are still doing those things, I'm asking you to pray to God to help you to stop today. Because when you walk in darkness, you think nobody sees you, but what you forget to understand is that you also cannot see. So, so, so some, sometimes we just think, so you stumble and fall because you also can't see, but you're enjoying the fact that you are consumed by your selfishness and you blame your wife and everybody else for what you do. Let go. Now, as I wrap this up, is that I believe God wants to set families free this morning because many of us are suffering many consequences of our actions, our sins, things that we've done before. But I remind you that Psalm 57 verse 2 says, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfill his purpose for me. To God who fulfill his purpose for me. Very important, because it is God who fulfilled that purpose. Family, I invite you to please stand with me at this time. Um, as the band come up, I'm going to proclaim the generational blessing and just conclude this. This is a generational declaration. And I will go through it, and I just need you to agree with me. Lord Abraham's blessings are mine in Christ Jesus. Amen. Therefore, I pray, let every Abrahamic blessing which you pronounce on him begin to manifest in my life. And those of my children and children's children in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, Abrahamic blessings include fruit, fruit, fruitless, fruitfulness. I therefore ask that the manifestation of fruitfulness in my life come forth from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, Abraham's blessing include longevity. I therefore ask that the power of longevity be upon my life, my children and grandchildren, and declare that none of us shall die young. We will fulfill our days in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, Abrahamic's blessing include wealth. I therefore ask that the power of wealth be upon my life, my home, my children, and my lineage. I declare that we live in abundance. Frustration and begging is no longer our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, Abraham's blessing include treasures. I therefore pray that financial provisions shall, shall accrue to my generation under God. Manifest from now onwards, I decree that this day shall be no more. Delays in financial prosperity in my life and family in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I therefore call forth everything that ought to be mine, known and unknown, all my blessing in the hands of people who don't know me, to even know, who don't want me to even know about them. I break powers holding such blessings of mine now. I command them to manifest and be released to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God, open your heavens unto me. Let blessings that surpass me come to me as you spoke to Abraham. Lord, make me a blessing to my children and children's children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And I think as Pastor Gillian come up, I'm going to just, um, if you don't know Christ this morning, do not leave this house. Those are the first people I'm going to call if you don't know Christ please come in front please come in front people will pray for you that's the first members do we have anyone want to come in front so we can pray for you here this morning any hands coming up all right we will be here to pray for you after the service but the second call is for families if you want your family to be prayed for, if there are things that you are hoping for, 
please come forward so we may pray for you. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. His favor be upon you in a thousand generations. Your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor be upon you in a thousand generations. In your family and your children and their children and their children. May His presence go before you. Behind you and beside you, all around you and within you, he is with you, he is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, he is for you, he is for you.